thank you for the invitation, first of all, to make the closing remarks at this, what I believe is an important but also a well-timed event. Uh, it comes very soon after the um, Commission has launched its own uh, bioeconomy strategy and action plan. Uh, I'm delighted that so many different uh, stakeholder groups were represented in today's event, uh, from industry to policy makers, from civil society to farmers. That's only fitting. The bioeconomy is already a major part of Europe's economy, and we should ensure that a wide range of views are represented when we discuss how the bioeconomy can help us to tackle the challenges faced by our society. By 2050, the world's population will have leaped to 9 billion people from 7 billion today. It is estimated that by then, demand for food will have increased by 70%, while energy needs will double. So we do need a thriving and sustainable bioeconomy in Europe to help us move towards a post-carbon economy where we live within the limits of our renewable natural resources. To help steer Europe through this major shift, as I said last month, we in the Commission adopted the Bioeconomy Strategy and Action Plan in our communication, Innovating for Sustainable Growth, a Bioeconomy for Europe. The challenge, of course, is to ensure a secure supply of food, energy and raw materials, while at the same time safeguarding biodiversity and reducing our impact on the environment, as indeed the previous speaker mentioned at the beginning of his talk. If we succeed, and succeed we must, then the rewards will be great. Europe will reduce its dependency on fossil resources and will be at the leading edge of innovative biotechnologies. At the same time, we can secure one of the foundations for long-term prosperity, maintaining and creating jobs in rural, coastal and industrial areas across the continent. The strategy promotes the substitution of carbon, energy and water intensive production processes with more resource efficient and environmentally friendly processes and the replacement of non-renewable products by more sustainable bio-based ones where possible. Another part of the strategy aims to increase public and private sector investments in research innovation and skills, focusing on multidisciplinary and cross-sectoral research and innovation at an EU, national and regional level. By providing advice and support services to SMEs and other companies, we can help to improve their uptake of research results. Our SMEs are vitally important for growth and job creation. Between 2002 and 2010, 85% of new jobs in the EU were created by SMEs, which is considerably higher than their two-thirds share of total employment. So SMEs naturally have a key role to play in driving innovation and creating growth in the bio-based industries. And I'm pleased that many SMEs are taking good advantage of the opportunities already offered by the seventh framework program for research. They applied for more than 30% of the funds available under the most recent biotechnologies call for proposals. This is particularly impressive considering that their share was only 10% in 2007. And I think that this is the result of a number of specific measures that we took, such as targeting certain topics uh, on SMEs and requiring demonstration activities in projects. The huge innovation potential of biotechnology research is highlighted by the fact that so far one third of these projects have generated patents. The Pharma Planta project is one example of the impact of SME involvement in biotechnology research financed by the Framework Programme. The project aimed to produce pharmaceuticals in plants that can be used to prevent infections such as HIV and rabies. This approach can help us produce modern medicines economically and in sufficient quantities to meet global demand. Four SMEs were involved in this project and it's hoped that it will act as a springboard for further developments in this area. 
Given successes such as these, a core part of the bioeconomy strategy is to strengthen our investment in research and innovation. The EU is already giving massive support. The seventh framework programme is investing 1.9 billion euro in research and innovation in the areas of food, agriculture and fisheries and biotechnologies. And we have even greater ambitions for the future. With Horizon 2020, our new funding framework program for research and innovation, which will come into force, as you know, in 2014, we're proposing to more than double our investment, allocating 4.7 billion euro over seven years under the theme food security, sustainable agriculture, marine and maritime research, and the bioeconomy. Yes, this is an investment in excellent research and innovation, but it must also be seen as a stimulus for the European economy. The bioeconomy can become an economic powerhouse for Europe, providing major returns and added value on what we invest. Each euro invested in bioeconomy research and innovation is expected to trigger another 10 euro of added value in the bioeconomy by 2025. Investment in the bioeconomy will create jobs and growth, often in the most marginalised and peripheral areas of Europe. And this is what Europe needs today and in the future. This is why the European Commission is totally committed to the bioeconomy strategy. No fewer than five commissioners signed the strategy. However, building the bioeconomy will be a collective effort in which all of us, industries, member states, regions, stakeholders in research and innovation, citizens and the European Commission will all have to work together. The launch of the European Innovation Partnership on Agricultural uh, Productivity and Sustainability last month provides a new model of how we can work together to increase our overall impact. In this case, by strengthening links between research and farmers. I believe that the possible public-private partnership on bio-based industries that we're currently discussing with our stakeholders could also offer a real boost to Europe's leadership in the bioeconomy. So we all have a lot of work to do. Today's event has given many ideas and has showcased many of the real success stories. I look forward very much to those successes multiplying exponentially as the European bioeconomy grows into a world leading force. So thank you for the invitation and by the way the, the uh, report is excellent. You can imagine which country I went to first to have a look to see <laughs> where it was on the scale. Thank you.